It's 7.15 a.m. Do you know where Sippy Cup is? Time. Timer flip. Seven times. BT system. You ain't testing. You're guessing. Well, 7.25. I waited literally 10 minutes for this Sippy Cup to show up. Texted him. No response. I bet she's still at that house party. I left them that yesterday afternoon. What a shame. All right, let's get the day started. I gotta tell you, not showing up for work, not calling, not even a text message, it's the same as quitting. So, sippy cup quit. Lasted about five days. Well, if you can't take the heat, get your ass out the kitchen. Anyone who's local, wants to work with a winning team, and work with me, Mikey Pipes, I'm hiring. Send me an email, mike at pipedoc.net or mike at mikeypipes.com. Send me an email with your interests and intentions and where you live, and maybe you can be the next occupant for that seat. And as you know, Sitting in that seat comes with a shitload of benefits. Literally. You'll either be laughing. Red light camera reported ahead. Or you'll be crying all day. But at the end of the day, we're going to have a great time. So, we had Kelvin. We had Godzilla. We had Phil, who lasted two days. Joey, who lasted two days, and Sippy Cup, who lasted five. Do you have it in you? We'll find out. Mike at pipedoc.net. Email me. It's me, Mikey Pipes, alongside with one of my great clients. I have a dilemma, and I'm asking you to help. Here is a rude ream two and a half ton R410A system. On hot days, right? Yep. Hot days, the compressor comp appears to be going out on thermal overload. The ECM condenser fan motor, by the way, is running at 0.8 amps. It's rated for 1.4. The compressor, today we have an outdoor air temperature of roughly around 78 degrees right now. And let's take a look at these pressures. I have not been able to duplicate the issue, set cooling is a little high, but it was fine when I changed the TXV at exactly 11 degrees sub -cooling. I have not been able to duplicate the issue since I've been here. Twice already. Twice? Or three times? Well, once when we changed the actual TXV. Yeah. So here's my dilemma. Why is the compressor going out on thermal overload? The condensing coil we acid washed rinsed and it's clean we know that for a fact and when the compressor does turn off the ecm circ um circulator the ecm condenser fan motor stays running continuously and like i said 0.8 amps on both lines l1 l2 and i have right now 5.4 amps on l1 l2 for the compressor And the only thing I didn't check, actually, is the capacitor. I tested the capacitor at the very beginning before, before I called you, because it's the one thing I knew I could do. Okay. It's spot on what the rating says in the sun. And that was? Four weeks ago. Okay. And it was dead on. Yeah. And did you test it with the system running or system off? You disconnected the wiring. Off. Oh, I disconnected it and tested the capacitance meter. That, that's just the run capacitor. It doesn't have a start capacitor. Correct. No, but I'm just because it's but it's also for the compressor. Yeah. It's not for the condenser yeah, fan motor because that's a, that's an ECM motor. So as if let's test it anyway. Yeah. Forty one. And she's a forty. Capacitor is good. So, Mikey Pipes, asking you guys, the community, for some feedback, thoughts, 
and comments. What happened? It's on a delay. Why is it on a delay? I don't know. Hmm. Uh, that's, that's why I don't like these Nest thermostats. It, that's what it typically was doing when the... Um... The only thing I did was put the cast back on. <laughs> Why would it cause it to go delay? I, I don't see. I'm not a fan of these nests. Sure, we could do that. It's probably. How long was the delay for? Three minutes. Okay, so we have some time. So nest randomly says delay. And then system, was the fan running inside? Yeah, because you're running on a fan schedule, right? Let's take an insulated screwdriver. Let's push in the contactor. There's no cool, there's no call for cooling. So the ECM, the ECM motor is not gonna turn on. Hmm, that nest, I don't know. I love my Vito, by the way. Great Vito. Let's put the stubby, the stubby multi. <laughs> yeah, now I'd be with you on suspecting the thermostat. However, on one occasion, you actually went out here and the contactor was still pulled in, the condenser fan motor was running. Correct? The con you told me the contactor was pulled in. The little thing, the little black button right there. Well, I said the contactor was pulled in when, during the, nor you know, the no, no, when, so when the compressor wasn't running, during a thermal overload situation, the contact was, was pulled in. When the compressor was not running, you have thermal camera, you took, so it was yes. very hot, yes. and that was, exactly. that was pushed in. Yes. Okay. The question is, why is the compressor going into thermal overload? And now another dilemma is, why did the nest go into four minute delay during the middle of a, of a cooling cycle? I, be, from the data that I'm collecting, mm -hmm. I can tell the difference because I have the signal of whether the nest is calling for cooling or not. Now, the so, data as far as temperatures. Well, I also have the data from the nest. So, I'm actually, I'm logging whether what the nest is set to, okay. what it's reading, and whether it's calling for cooling and whether it's calling for fan. And so, most of the time, when this happens, the nest is, is calling for cooling, and it stops, the compressor stops, and it's still calling for cooling. And when the one time you checked, you have a thermal camera on the compressor, it was very hot, yes. and the contactor was still pushed in, so it was getting power. Yes. And the condenser fan motor was running. Yes. Right? So, if the condenser fan motor was running, we know for a fact we have 240 volts, because condenser fan motor is hooked up to L1, L2 off the bottom of the contactor. If we didn't have that, then we don't. We suspect lack of 240 volts. Interesting. Why is it overheating? But now also another thing is why did Nest just randomly go into four minute delay? Yeah, this situation is different. And this this is the thing I only caught it doing once. And I know I can see it because on the, my graphs, it shows that the Nest stopped calling for cooling when, when this happened. Okay, so that's but why, but why is it doing that? that? No, you said Nest went into delay when it was calling for cooling, but why? Well, that's exactly well, that's exactly what would happen though if you pull. If you you pressure pulled switch. It. So if I if I disconnect, let's try this. Now, was it the white wire is common on your diagram, or was the red common? Because you have a diagram, and I'm, I gotta love engineers, by the way, <laughs> in a good way. Yeah, so white comes out here, turns to brown. Right, it turns to brown. No, it doesn't. Oh, it turns to oh, this brown. So if I disconnect this right here, right, we're gonna lose. We're gonna lose our 24 volt signal right. for. Just careful with that. For the for the uh, condenser to run. Now, if we go to the thermostat right now, the thermostat will be off. Right, we or it has a battery in it, so. But what would it say right now? Uh, I think it, it goes into delay. It goes into delay. Why yeah. is it going into delay? Uh, That's what you need to figure out. 
Because the way it's wired, it's relying on Y. There we go, power out error. See? It's when it comes back on, it has a built-in delay. That's okay though, but Y, so you need C. You don't have to comment on your nest. We need to, we need to give you C. You need that. That's don't true, worry, I'm not showing face. I'm just I, showing the okay. phone. I'm not showing my face, but I think that's unrelated. They're, they're two I know it's unrelated, but it's like... Because while I don't have C, I have this information, right? Yeah, Which correct. Is that the, power, the power went out to the thermostat. Oh, I believe wiggle. the same as you disconnecting that, right? It's a high pressure switch trip for just a second. Then it, would, when it shuts off, it would immediately equalize again and, and reclose. And then the thermostat would, would go into delay. So my theory is that occasion, most of the time it trips on a thermal overload. Sometimes it trips on high pressure. Want to hold that for a second? I want to re re-splice these in because it's been a couple times already since we unwire none of this. I just want to give you a better connection here, which I happen to I love. some Wagos. You got some Wagos. <laughs> Lego my Wago. I love these, by the way. They're awesome. Me too. And before I hook up the other one, let me just splice this as well. And there is 24 volts here, so you want to be very careful playing with this. Make sure you don't touch anything with it. Otherwise, I'll be going up in the attic and replacing a fuse. <laughs> and hope it'll be a bust. It'll be a Bustman fuse, not a cheap Amazon China fuse. Yeah, before you go, I gotta show you my fuse testing. Okay. Set. Yeah, I gotta see that because some people sent me some videos responding to that. Now the white was common, so let's put the common on brown. And the red was Y coming from thermostat. So let's put that in the yellow. And now we have that delay mm -hmm. because now it's for some reason powering the thermostat. Just tuck them into the corner right there. Lego my way. Sam? So while, while we were cleaning up here and we were, we were getting ready to finish and it cut out and the, and the nest went into delay, there's a possibility that that might have been the high pressure uh, tripping. Because but we but we but simple. we just checked that though, and literally I just removed our uh, the Testo Smart probes, mm -hmm. and there's actually this one which mm -hmm. is my, hold on. This is the low the low side, but I had just taken it off, and I was putting the caps on when it went off, and the pressures up to that point were normal. Yeah, I guess we had would, we had 15 would, degrees yeah. of subcooling, so again a little bit high. But I'm not, this is still blank. This is not, nothing's connected yeah, yeah. in case you want. It's just, it's, you know, fake numbers right there. <laughs> um, but it's a possibility, but maybe you have a bad high pressure switch going out. It's, but we, okay, we, we, we would need to duplicate it. And we do it more consistently. Because yeah. so, things like okay. that generally don't fail. A flounder, maybe. I was looking at the coil. It looks a little whitish there, but maybe it's just my an optical illusion. Straight ahead, right there. Yeah. See that? Yeah. Well, the coil looks a little whitish there, dead of the screen. See that? Yeah. I didn't see that last time I was here. Just if you stand here, you could see right in there. So, curious. Very, very curious. What's going on here? There's no badging on it, by the way. Oh, <laughs> There's no badging. Um, we know that it was from 2015. It came with a five-year warranty, so it's out of warranty. But I'm very curious to know what is causing, based on the data that we've received so far from the homeowner, and we're actually going to install a Sentry, which is made by who? You know who makes that Sentry? Got the name too, but I emailed them a couple times, no response whatsoever. Nothing. I basically said, "Listen, I want to, I want to buy your stuff and not use the Emerson Sensi, and because yours appears to monitor pressures, refrigerant pressures, and on a on a subscription basis, but they never got back to me. But it's on order. CE Northeast is bringing it from another region, and we'll see. But Mikey Pipes asking you, community, for some feedback, and let me get your thoughts and and. Yeah, thoughts and feedback on what you think is the cause here. On that, right there. Hotter days, compressor, turning off thermal overload, condensing coil is clean, fan water stays running, 
and contact her pull has stayed pulled in the whole entire time. And she is properly sized, in my opinion, two and a half tons, roughly 800 square feet of condition space for this system. So let's round up. Let's say you have a thousand square feet, poorly insulated house from the 19, early 1960s. Uh, it only happens on hot days. And I, yeah, I've been in here on a hot day and haven't duplicated it. Go.